just more events, more everything. Oh my goodness, AB gonna peek out as well, and is Lacton gonna go massive? Oh my goodness! Lacton getting a triple kill! Oh! He gets the 4K there! What a flank and just a tremendous feat here for Lacton. But there's another kill by Lacton finishing off the Bandit. The Rainbow Six Siege Pro League put a bow on its 10th season with an explosive finals in Tokonami, Japan. To talk about the whole experience, we've invited Team Reciprocity's Laxing to the show. Welcome to Squad Laxing. Hi Lisa, thanks for having me. I appreciate having of me out course, here again. Of course, of course. I've been waiting for a moment to have you on the show. Um, at this point, you've returned home from Japan for like over a week now. How is the jet lag? How is it returning home? The jet lag is still, still very much a thing. Um, I can't seem to f make it work i constantly <laughs> am sleeping in and out like just yesterday i woke up at 4 p.m and then fell asleep woke up back at 10 and then have been up since to make this interview so it's definitely all over the place we really appreciate of course you making this interview um you, so you were just in japan which is really exciting to play at the pro league finals what was the experience like being in japan and playing there the Japan experience as a whole was something that I can't even like explain. It was super amazing. The atmosphere, the people, just the culture itself was by far my best experience I've ever had even going to any event gaming related. And like I said, to more touch up like on the audience as a whole, that was by far the best audience I've ever played in front of. Uh, got the chance to meeting, um, just all of it was a surreal experience and very humbling experience when it came to the audience. So amazing to hear. Uh, I want to know more about your trip though. Like, did you get to spend any time sightseeing? What was the like funnest thing that you did while you were there? So yeah, so this was actually the first time ever, even in my um, experience of actually extending our stay. So we, obviously we were in Tokoname, then we went to, I don't know the city, but we were kind of in the heart of Tokyo. And we, it was me, Fox, and Skies, and we uh, rented this apartment complex called One Third something. But like, you gotta really like experience the culture a little bit um, outside of like being, you know, in the heart of downtown. So it was very kind of like rustic in some ways, but then you would cross like three blocks and then we were in this completely video game oriented world. And it, I don't know, it was like, like I said, the whole experience as a whole, just walking around exploring everything was just surreal. That sounds amazing. Um, but we got to touch on the tournament. So uh, your team obviously qualified as NA second seed, I believe, and finished in the semifinals, which is fantastic. Uh, but since then, has the team taken the time to kind of review and reflect on how you guys felt like you guys did at the tournament? Yeah, so if anyone's aware, we lost to Navi, which is the team that ended up winning it all. I'm super proud of those guys and congrats to them. We lost by two rounds, it was unfortunate, because um, we were so close to making finals, to making an all NA final, which that's kind of was the thought around the whole tournament that NA was going to win it. But um, so obviously, it's not my first loss and it's not our team's first loss. Uh, losing sucks regardless, but you know, we came together as a team after kind of use that time as well to the with the extended stay to kind of just you know have fun relax a bit and then come back home and then talk about it watch a few vods and kind of see like what we could do differently so we don't repeat those same mistakes in the future but ultimately you know in this at, th at this level you can't focus on a loss you just have to focus on the future and how you're going to do it differently that's exactly that's great that you guys came out of that tournament with that mentality uh, like you touched on Navi obviously went on you lost to the one that and eventually won that. the tournament which is kind of a nice you know reassuring thought um, what do you think about the players on this roster like do you have any uh, I guess close connections with them what do you think about the players specifically so if I'm being honest I'm not too familiar with a lot of the guys from Navi. I'd say the one that I knew the most or had the most experience talking to was uh, Pi, and he's actually the sub in for Doki. Um, but I knew Pi through mutual friends in the H1Z1 community. So as far as everyone else on Navi, I, was, I didn't know of them too much, but I mean, they're obviously solidified a name for themselves, not only making Pro League at their first go of coming from Challenger League, but then on top of winning the Pro League finals in Japan. So I mean, huge props to those guys. It was definitely well-deserved win for them. Uh, it's inter Like you said, it's interesting to look at the bracket because you guys could have had that NA final, yeah. um, which makes me think, if you made it to the final, if your team made it to the finals, do you think you guys could have taken down Dark Zero, especially since Dark Zero, I guess, beat you guys in the regular season? Yeah. Um, I think we would have had a good chance. I think this team 
plays better um, in a LAN environment. I don't know what it is. It's just the environment in itself versus sitting at home, uh, staring at this, not having that crowd behind you that kind of like, you know, gets hyped after a play, kind of you feed off that. So I think the games would have definitely been pretty intense against Dark Zero, but I, I think we would have came out on top, but nothing to take away from Dark Zero. They're a phenomenal team, and it just even in the regular North American Pro League season, they obviously showed their dominance throughout the season. Let's talk about, you mentioned before how there was almost like everyone expected an NA team to win. You guys were kind of expecting the two of you guys to make it to the finals. Um, coming into a tournament with those kind of thoughts, those expectations, was there any additional pressure to represent NA in that way? Um, in a sense, yes, but just as a whole, I mean, as I touched on prior, you know, we've been doing this for, you know, a few years now, so it's just... It's just a matter of keeping a level head and just focusing on what you need to do and not focusing on that outside stuff, which we fell short, which we always seem to do. Mm -hmm. We always lose to the uh, the championship uh, team, the winning team. So that's kind of... It's kind of rough. I'm kind of tired of losing to the champions. That's really interesting you bring that up. Like, that must have some sort of effect on team mentality. Like, when you lose often, repeatedly, to the winner of a tournament, how does that affect you guys? Um, I mean, it sucks because, you know, we've... I G2, in the past, I've lost to them, like, every single time. They ended up winning every single event that I've lost to them. And then now, in this instance, we are two rounds away from being in finals and then we lose to Navi and then Navi ends up winning the entire thing. So I don't know, it's a pretty, and then even back in DreamHack Valencia, um, Rogue beat us and they ended up winning the event. So I don't know, we keep, every time we lose in these events, it's always to the champions. And I just, I want to be the champion. I'm tired of, I'm tired of losing to the champion. Exactly. So on that note, looking ahead, you have a couple of tournaments coming up. Uh, one, the U.S. Nationals, and of course, six Invitational way down the line. Yeah. Um, so what uh, is the team and yourself really thinking about and focusing on to prepare for those tournaments? So, I mean, it's just going to be exactly what it is for any tournament. It's going to be a lot of grinding, a lot of VOD review, a lot of just working on our own craft and making sure that we have it down to a T. Obviously, nothing's going to be perfect. We can get as close as possible, but I don't think anyone can necessarily be perfect in any case. It's just going to, like I said, it's going to be coming down to a matter of just constant grinding, constant improvement, and then translating that over, well, transitioning that over into our actual gameplay at these events. You know, when I think a lot of teams, when they, you know, whether lose repeatedly to the same people or like in your situation you just mentioned you're always losing to the team that eventually wins people feel pressured or feel pressured to change something whether it's yeah. a physical like member or org thing or a mentality is there something that you guys have kind of narrowed it down to um, I mean, I kind of see how I've always seen it is, you know, this team has tons of potential as a whole so the us losing and coming up short more often than not, I don't feel that it needs to be a roster change or um, anything drastic like that. Maybe a role change, maybe someone playing a little different play style. But I think as a whole, like we have the championship roster that we need. It's just a matter of finding those small tweaks in our own play that could ultimately make or break the success for us. That's good. You guys have some sort of game plan. Um, just moving away from the tournament a little bit, obviously Ubisoft announced the next operation and everyone's always excited to talk about it. Uh, <laughs> Operation Shifting Tides. Have you had a chance to even like check out uh, the, I guess, reveal and what do you think about the rework of Theme Park? Yeah, so I actually haven't touched too much on Theme Park, but I've tried out the new operators. I'm still not familiar with the names yet. Sorry, I, I know that sounds bad and I'm a professional player. But uh, so the sniper rifle op, um, Kali, I think her name is. Um, she's, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't think that there should be a sniper rifle in the game, um, kind of where this is at because that gun just kind of just one shots everyone, but it's, <laughs> it's interesting. I, I'm curious in the direction they're going to go with future operators. It's not as like broken as some operators have been in the scene. So I just hope for the future of Siege that they kind of go in more of a path of, you know, making more balanced operators that don't really affect a ton of the game or like change a huge outcome of the game. So we'll just see how it works. I mean, you know, there's always there's always something and we'll just see what happens. 
Okay, fair, fair. Uh, by the way, for those who are wondering, it, it's Kali and Wumai. <laughs> just, Wumai, yeah. That, there that you go. Yeah. All right. Their names are, I don't know. They're just, <laughs> you just play them. Names. It doesn't matter their yeah. names. Um, all right, last question before we let you go. Uh, I need to talk to you about your social game, actually, because you and your team are very interesting on social media. Uh, is, there, is it a requirement to be like a hype beast to play on Reciprocity, or what's going on there? <laughs> so... In your terms of hype beast, what are, what are you referring to? Okay, as listen. Beast? If anyone follow you guys on social media, you guys are always flexing on people with your was it Balenciaga bags or whatever Louis Vuitton. Like, what's going on? What is this a culture you guys just all share? <laughs> um, I mean that reciprocity check hits different, <laughs> but I mean you know we just we like to have fun. You know we like to splurge here and there. Um, I wouldn't say it defines us as who we are. Some people take it as like, oh, you know, reciprocity guys, they're only in it for the money. But I mean, you know, we work just as hard as all the other top teams um, and maybe if not harder, but you know, we know how to have fun. We know how to enjoy ourselves. You know, it's not, it's not just about, you know, just gaming. Like you gotta, you gotta be able to have fun in all aspects. And you know, that that's what our team definitely does on social media. I mean, you've seen, you've talked to me and Fox in person, you know, we're, we're tons of fun. I mean, there's some people that kind of like keep it themselves but my team definitely kind of is out there and you know lets everyone know that we're having fun some people like it some people don't but it's who we are at the end of the day and that's just you know that's how it's going to stay whether it's louis v, whether it's louis v or it's gucci balenciaga you know it's still <laughs> going to be us at the end of the day i'm gonna give it to you guys you guys are probably definitely the top top five most interesting people in rainbow six uh, but laxing thank you so much for talking to me and of course best of luck in the future and more checks in the future <laughs> Thank you so much, Lisa. I'm, it's, I'm glad that you actually finally got me on here because I know I was bothering you for nah, such a long time to get me on here. It's our so. honor, and we'd love to have you back. <laughs> I would love to be back.